yes, we had a government, we had democracy, we had um, uh, all the institutions that we built. Um, women progressed in every sphere. Women progressed in politics, women uh, progressed in the government, women progressed in sports. In the last 20 years, women really had the opportunity to start um, really non-traditional businesses in IT sector, in restaurant, in travel agency, construction, logistics. On August 15th, um, Afghanistan fully fell down to the hands of uh, Taliban. And Taliban was a group of um, extremist, um, Islamic extremists. Uh, women um, are stopped to go to work. Women are um, stopped to go to universities. Uh, at this moment, all, all what's about uh, the political chaos is going on in the country, but all they're worried about is women to cover themselves. Good morning, good evening. Today I'm going to talk to Manija Wafik, who is Afghan entrepreneur and campaigner for women's rights. Uh, Manija is a co-founder and president at Afghanistan Women's Chamber of Commerce and Industry. After graduating in economics, she has been working since 2002 with development projects for women's empowerment and gender equality. She has co-authored a, a training manual on business startup and the gender and the legal framework of Afghanistan. She has trained more than 500 governmental staff in Kabul and provinces on gender mainstreaming and has worked for 10 years with the program Peace Through Business. Uh, Manija and her sister Sanya established a clothing production company in 2012 and called Wonderland Women, which sells both ready-made and custom clothes. Manija, I welcome you to our program. Nice to see you. Thank you, Veronica. Nice to see you too. Manija, let's start uh, from the situation in Afghanistan. Could you please provide us some insight uh, on the situation in Afghanistan? What's happening in Afghanistan now? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure, uh, Veronica. So um, all of you, I mean, the world is aware that um, Afghanistan uh, was in fight um, with a number of um, uh, groups of uh, opposition to the government um, in the last in terrorists in the last um, um, 40 years, actually, if we count all the years, including the last 20 years. The last 20 years, yes, we had a government, we had democracy, we had um, uh, all the institutions that we built, um, and um, three, four times of the presidential uh, elections happened, uh, parliamentarian elections happened. I mean, really, um, overall, if you look at the situation in the last 20 years, uh, we had um, a government, um, a democratic government, um, but uh, on the other side, fight was really going on in the country. We have had um, explosions on almost a daily basis in various cities. We have had um, conflict, like uh, confronting uh, terrorist groups with the government, um, um, various um, military groups in, in various uh, lo uh, locations of Afghanistan. So finally, uh, on, um, on March, uh, I'm sorry, on August 15th, um, Afghanistan fully fell down to the hands of uh, Taliban. And Taliban was a group of um, extremist, um, Islamic extremist um, fighters from 1994 and 1995, when they emerged in um, uh, in Kandahar. I mean, this is what the story is. And then um, they uh, took over all Afghanistan also uh, back then, uh, from 1994 to 1996, fully ruling uh, and taking over the country's uh, capital city, which is Kabul. Um, and they ruled from then until 2001, end of 2001, and then by the end of 2001, um, they, their rule uh, was um, uh, was uh, finished through U.S. and international um, allies getting into Afghanistan, helping Afghanistan. Uh, and then after 20 years, again on August 15th, um, the same extremist group that took over Afghanistan in 1990, um, fully in 1995 and 1996, and ruled it for five years, uh, took over again Afghanistan on fully August 15th. 
And so for the last um, more than a month now, uh, we have been seeing a lot of um, a deterioration of the situation, especially for women. Uh, women um, are stopped to go to work. Women are um, stopped to go to universities um, until they prepare uh, separate spaces for men and women. Monique, can yeah. I ask you a question? Because uh, we all read that during the Taliban 20 years ago, women were not allowed to go to the school, right? You were allowed yes. to go out maybe once or twice a month, usually just to do some grocery shopping, etc., or visit your relatives. And you had to be accompanied by your male family member. It was 20 years ago. And, yes. now, and now all this situation when, you know, the people were executed, beheaded, the, the people were, you know, killed, murdered in the front of uh, thousands uh, witnesses, this situation is coming back to Afghanistan, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why we that's why we see so many refugees, so many people who are trying to flee the country and not to stay in Afghanistan by any means. So yes, the se the second question, like uh, what's happening, uh, what's happening with the women? I mean, with the, in in terms of the women, right? Because as you said, they started to uh, put a separate classes, men, boys, and girls, right? What else has changed since uh, August 15, twenty twenty one? Yes, yeah, so the school um, or schools are stopped. Only primary um, school for girls are open. Secondary and uh, higher higher um, high school classes are uh, stopped. Um, as I said, you know uh, they want uh, only female teachers to teach uh, female students. So that's a little bit unpractical to have female um, female teachers everywhere to only teach female students. And so um, that's uh, what has happened. They are stopped from work. And the, the, the group that I'm working with, business women, uh, and they are uh, uh, 50 plus 57,000 of them are there uh, in Afghanistan in various parts of the country. And they had started all types of businesses, um, all types of businesses, non-traditional businesses. Afghanistan overall is a very traditional, very um, religious and conservative country. Um, it has been all, all this time. But despite of that, in the last 20 years, women really had the opportunity to start um, really non-traditional businesses in IT sector and restaurant and travel agency, construction, logistics, um, uh, private schools, uh, private clinics. Uh, I mean, you just name it. Every sector uh, women had uh, entered and had started their businesses. And so it was going on very well because they did not only provide a job opportunity for themselves by starting these businesses, but also they created more jobs to other women, um, specifically other women. Um, and this was great. And also, you know, by the, the number of women who uh, really dared, you know, despite of all the cultural um, conservatism uh, that existed in the country all these years, um, that these women started restaurants or, for example, IT businesses or construction or logistics. These are some of the sectors that were very, you know, or media services, filmmaking. These are some, some of the sectors that were very non-traditional for women. So if they had started these businesses, we looked at them as role models, as door openers for our next generation. But now that on August 15th, all this happened and all the businesses are stopped now. So kind of uh, we have um, lost hope. But of course, we will not stop uh, being hopeless, but we have kind of lost hope that, OK, what will happen, especially if if the situation continued to be so uh, restricted as they have continued to restrict the situation for women. I mean, the Taliban group, then most of these women who are highly educated, who have started these businesses, they will try to leave the country, even though they have many of them have not. Many of them are still in the country. But um, if the restriction continues, they will uh, try to leave the country. And if they leave the country, we will lose the hope for the next generation that we had created in the last 20 years. And Manisha, let me ask you this question. You uh, decided to uh, establish your co-founder of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Why did you choose this fear? I mean, for female, for girls, for ladies, for women, uh, to empower them in business particularly? Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, we, we all um, know the fact that women's economic empowerment and once women have access to uh, wealth and to economy, 
their negotiation power um, gets uh, much more be better leverage than if they are not economically empowered. And so also personally, I was very much um, interested in doing business. And uh, this was this was one of my passions. And so um, when I started because, my business. Yeah, because you started your own business with your sister, right? This clothing company. Yes, yes. yes. So when I started my business, uh, but also, you know, from 2007, when I took this, the uh, classes of uh, peace through business, and for the last 10, no, not but 14 years, I've been teaching uh, peace through business classes and have been uh, working with more than 500 uh, business women in Afghanistan, teaching and mentoring them in various provinces of Afghanistan. So when I took the first class, first time a business class uh, in 2007 and tried to plan my uh, business, I realized that we did not have a platform to do policy advocacy for uh, women in business in Afghanistan. And there were already many of them there and nobody was talking about them. Nobody knew that women in business exist in the country. And not only women as business owners existed in the country, but traditionally women have played a big role in Afghanistan's um, industries, especially the export industry. So Afghanistan, um, all of you may know, the world knows, Afghanistan is famous for carpet, for uh, dry fruits. Um, and for the last few years, Afghanistan has become very famous for saffron, which is a very expensive uh, spice. Um, so 90% of the job for those export commodities have been done by women all throughout our history. But always women are considered as um, uh, economic beneficiaries and not economic actors. So when I looked at the situation, I was like, we have to have a platform, an entity that will advocate, that will create awareness among people and as well as among um, policymakers, not only within Afghanistan, but also uh, with international community to let them know of these facts and figures that business women exist in the country, it, not only business women exist, but 90% of the export commodities work is being done by women in Afghanistan. So women are economic actors in that country. And if we see them as economic actors, then we will go and, and work for them and we will, we will make them uh, development partners. But if we look at them as economic beneficiaries, then we will not consult them for the development. We will just you know, continue giving them uh, because we will think that they're just beneficiaries. So this is what we aimed and this is what we achieved also very well. So for the last um, four, uh, four and a half years, since uh, we established Afghanistan Women's Chamber of Commerce and Industry, business women get a, got a great recognition at both national and international level. We, were, we participated, for example, at the uh, 11th World Chambers Congress. And at the world, uh, that world chambers, that world uh, level uh, platform, I presented um, what we we did as as the chamber of commerce and what we how we improved women businesses in Afghanistan, and we 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 won an award for that. So so the world also got aware of uh, Afghan women as economic actors, and also within the country we became part of every policy making table. So that was a great achievement until August 15th, unfortunately. You work with the women of Afghanistan and we know for many, many years, women were uh, suppressed from, you know, they were banned going to school, they were banned going to the universities. They couldn't, they didn't get, get a chance to get any university degree. Uh, based on your experience, working with the women within uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, which you are the head of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, do you see that women have changed significantly uh, since, you know, like the United States came to Afghanistan and since you have, uh, you know, like some democratic uh, freedom in your country when the situation completely changed, uh, you know, uh, around education of women? Do, what kind of pro progress did you see within these 20 years uh, if we talk about women? Mm -hmm. Huge, huge progress. So despite of, I earlier mentioned, despite of um, us being uh, conservative, uh, religiously conservative and as well as culture, culturally conservative uh, society, uh, those uh, democratic uh, processes and 
and, and uh, the constitution, uh, democratic constitution, and as well as the presence of international community in Afghanistan and the acceptance of uh, all the basic human rights to be given to women and um, all the uh, human rights, um, human rights um, conventions and, and treaties that um, Afghanistan became part of, uh, including um, CEDAW uh, and uh, Convention for elimination, elimination of All Types of uh, Discrimination Against Women, um, and, and many others that Afghanistan became part of. All of those enabled women to really exercise their freedom and to really um, choose their profession, to choose um, uh, what they wanted to do. Women progressed in every sphere. Women progressed in politics. Women uh, progressed in the government. Women progressed in sports. Um, I mean, you see, if you if you uh, search, um, go, I mean, Google today, <laughs> you will see um, Afghan women were part of Olympics. I mean, just recently, yes, I, they were I there. Saw it. I saw what, the yeah, they were there. there and, mm -hmm, exactly. So, so women, Afghan women, became part of everything, every sphere of life in the country. Filmmakers, um, as I said, um, um, culture. I mean, and cultural affairs like filmmaking and, and be, be, being part of everything. So this was really uh, great. And Afghan women became really uh, great professionals. They, they were provided with opportunities to, um, to go to get their higher education, like masters, PhDs outside the country. They, they went and they came back to Afghanistan. They started serving in various um, technical positions, um, uh, being part of analysis of the situation and so on. And so this was very uh, great progress that uh, women had made because of the uh, democracy and because of the international community's presence and because of the, um, the, the uh, either the Afghan laws that were based on international uh, treaties and international um, human rights and democratic um, standards or uh, because of those international treaties that we, we became part of. And by the way, it's important to mention that for a, for a conservative society like Afghanistan, um, we have had two laws. We had uh, an, an elimination of violence against women law that was passed in 2009. And we had uh, a law for anti-harassment uh, that was uh, passed in 2018. So, um, so this was, you know, for, for, such, for such a society, just because of democratic uh, system, democratic constitution that we have had, but our democratic constitution was very much also uh, Sharia based and Islamic based. I mean, uh, Islam and and, and uh, Quran um, values were enshrined in the uh, in the Afghanistan democratic constitution. So, because of that, we have had the possibility of having those two laws, and the, those two laws provided great protection for women. And Amanija, taking into consideration this recent uh, situation in Afghanistan, how are you going to uh, fight for the women in Afghanistan? Like, uh, do you have, or you now work uh, or mostly with the international community? I mean, uh, Afghanistan diaspora, what are your strategics uh, in regarding, you know, empower, empowering of women who are under Taliban right now? Mm -hmm. So um, what we have decided, we have decided um, to uh, engage with um, Taliban, and that's because of our moral responsibility towards our um, women who are in the country and who want to continue their uh, businesses because they've given their life uh, and um, in, in starting these businesses. So um, giving by by giving their life, I mean they have really. Um, sold their, um, for example, um, jewelry, the, the lifetime, you know, um, wealth that they have had and purchased uh, because, you know, Afghan, Afghanistan, they buy a lot of uh, gold, jewelry gold as uh, as mean of uh, keeping um, uh, some um, stable asset to the family. So they've sold those, those family jewelry and they have uh, started these businesses. They have really and, uh, invested their personal savings, their family savings. They have uh, borrowed from banks. They have borrowed from families, from relatives, and they have started these businesses. So, so based on our moral responsibility for those women, we want to get engaged with uh, with Taliban and and negotiate the position 
and the importance of um, our uh, women business owners' role for the economy of that country and for the economy of the households and, and societies. And uh, we have already started. We have already started reaching out to um, Taliban's um, minist uh, Minister of Economy, Minister of Commerce, and as well as um, there is a group of uh, Taliban's um, high-level delegation uh, as negotiators who used to be in Doha, Qatar, uh, to negotiate with the previous um, government uh, and the international community. Uh, so we have reached out also to them, and we are hoping that soon we get into one-on-one um, um, -on -one talk with them to really uh, negotiate their position. And at the same time, we have continued our advocacy with our international uh, partners and community, uh, so they continue support um, our uh, movement. Uh, but also continue supporting um, in terms of resources, because of course at this moment, uh, more than any other time, we will need resources to continue serving women who are in Afghanistan um, so, um, so, so their businesses don't die. I, I, I give this example that their businesses um, have now stopped, have, they're, they're, they're about to die, but they're not died fully. And they need all those um, those basic supports the, when you when you try to revive a person, giving them CPR support and you know all other uh, types of um, support, uh, pushing their heart or those kind of things. So um, uh, we we have to continue doing that. We have to provide uh, that CPR support, pushing heart support to keep their businesses alive and revive them. So um, we will continue doing that. And we, we want to really strategically approach this. So we have not yet uh, been out on the streets to demonstrate or to really um, uh, at this moment to take any, um, uh, so to say, revolutionary uh, measures. Uh, we have kept it very um, calm and we have really uh, made our way through um, some channels through male business uh, businesses, male, uh, other chambers that are run by men, and they have men as their leaders. So we have tried to reach throughout them uh, to make our way to Taliban leaders. Uh, and, and that's only because of the, the as I said, the, the moral res responsibility that we have towards our women to continue those businesses that they have given their life to start them. Anisha, uh, you know, I'm uh, originally from, uh, I'm from Belarus, you know, and probably, you know, what's happening in Belarus within the last year, last year we had presidential elections, and it was sixth time in a row when uh, our former president, we call him former president, he falsified the elections, and when the revolution started in Belarus, you know, and for more than one year, the people of Belarus been fighting with a very harsh dictatorship. Uh, the, the women are being in the front of this, you know, like a peaceful revolution. Do you see any similarities between uh, Belarusian women and Afghanistan women in this content? Yes, there is a very uh, good similarity. And by the way, uh, when I attended your um, award ceremony by uh, Women uh, Democracy Network, um, when I heard your story, I was uh, telling uh, my sister because she also attended and I was telling her that, look, this is how similar uh, the situation is. And it was good that we uh, came to your award ceremony to hear your story. So we see that we're, we're not the only ones in this uh, world who are, who's fighting dictatorship, as you said, who's fighting a situation that's uh, um, unfortunately unviable. For, uh, for women's work, for women's participation, for women's political, economic participation. Uh, and so, so, so really, um, we have the same situation uh, um, and, and it's very important for all the rulers to know if it's your uh, president or if it's uh, Taliban in Afghanistan, to know that in this era, in this era of uh, technology, in this era when uh, women have proved themselves as uh, leaders of uh, various countries today, we see how those countries have, uh, have done well uh, by having a woman leader, uh, like Germany, like New Zealand. Um, and so, um, so by looking at, at where the world has reached today, 
with, as I said, especially with technology and with also women proving themselves as great uh, leaders in various um, spheres. If it's political, if it's economical, um, and if it's uh, cultural or um, including the technology itself, then, um, then maybe dictatorship is not something that they can win with. That's, that's very important for them to understand that this is not 18th century, this is not 17th century, this is 21st century, and, and we have progressed so much that dictatorship will never win and dictatorship will never uh, make them succeed uh, in any way. And, and so um, they have to compromise, they have to come down with their um, whatever values they have in terms of um, uh, trying to rule with dictatorship and, and really accept democratic values, uh, and especially with women, they have to accept those democratic values and, and respect women, uh, women's participation in every sphere of um, life, uh, personal and, and, and public life. Um, so, so yeah, so, so this would be my message. Dictatorship is not going to take them anywhere. They will not succeed uh, making their countries um, uh, prosperous and economically uh, strong. Uh, let me ask you the question. Uh, are you optimistic about Afghanistan's future? Well, um, my optimism comes from the women of my country. Our women have always been very strong, resilient, and they have worked in very tough times. In the last, uh, last time of Taliban's ruling, women were not right. They did not have the um, uh, possibility to go to schools, but they taught every girl at their homes. Women were not able to go to work, but they worked in homes and they earned uh, their livelihood. Women, uh, go, women were not allowed to go and sell and work, obviously. They had to change the identity of, their, of the girls to make them boys. And, and the, those, those girls who became boys, they very, which was not right. I mean, I should know that, but this was, uh, this was what they had to do bravely and be among men and do whatever work they did at that time, selling products or working for a tea house and serving. And then at the end of the day, they became bread, breadwinners of their families, though they were girls. But look at their bravery, what they did. So my optimism come from the bravery, resilience, and uh, how strong my our women are in, in, in Afghanistan. And so this time will also pass and they will succeed. They will, they will fight, they will stand strong and tall, and they will make their way back to political sphere, economic sphere, government offices, in cultural and sports and every other place that they had made their place, they will get those back, hopefully, soon. I think we have uh, many things in common between uh, our two countries and you know we I often talk to uh, our women who went through imprisonment illegal imprisonment who went through torturous beatings and we all every time I talk to them I try to encourage them not to give up our fight because we understand for 27 years you know we've been fighting with an absolute evil in our country and uh, what would you say to Belarus women who are going through a very difficult time right now, who are going through prisons, whose uh, loved ones were illegally detained. Uh, some, many Belarus, Belarusian people lost their lives. What would you tell them as a woman from Afghanistan, whose ca your country has been under Taliban for many, many years in the past 20 years ago, and now uh, you're experiencing not maybe the same situation, but very, very challenging situation as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, I totally understand your situation, especially with the ones who are detained and are being tortured. It's much more uh, difficult situation than ours. Um, 
but um, I want to tell uh, your women that their sacrifice will pay one day. And so all what they need is to have patience and, and that patience will make them win this, this, this fight and this struggle that all of you have got into to fight dictatorship and uh, fight illegal deten detention and as well as um, uh, getting your place at the political offices. So you will hopefully win and um, please don't lose hope and please know that every sacrifice has paid it off. What, what do you think? Um, do women from different countries, especially with a similar destinies like Afghanistan, like Burma, I last time I spoke with one of activists from Burma, her name is Vaivainu. Do you think uh, these kind of women who are very passionate about their countries, who are very passionate about women in their countries, we need to get united, we need to work together, we need to stay together, we need to support each other. What do you think? I think, yes, it's, uh, it, it will be very helpful. It would be very encouraging for all of us to um, get connected and um, united and continue sharing um, our experiences with each other, our strategies with each other, and um, using each other's um, strategies and how we have done it, uh, we, we can become successful in our own countries because I may not know some of the ways that we should be, we should be fighting our situation that you might have taken. And so if we continue really uh, staying in touch and, and um, creating a, a strong network between the women of uh, the countries that have similar situation, this will be, um, I think, very helpful for all of us. So let's do it. Yes, I, I think it's a good idea. And uh, one question which recently I've heard from a young lady, she's uh, from Belarus, and she told me uh, she's, she's only 11, and she told me, you know, when I grow up, I would like to become a successful, prosperous businesswoman, because I want to be, you know, I don't want to be dependent on somebody else. What would you say to the young women, the young girls uh, who would like to start their business when they grow up? Because you deal with a businesswoman in Afghanistan on a daily basis. What do they need to succeed? They, they have to remain passionate as they um, are passionate. I mean, at, at 11 age, this is very um, great to hear that a woman, a girl of 11 years old tells you that she wants to become a businesswoman because she doesn't want to remain dependent. Look at it. So please, um, I would tell, I would ask them to remain as passionate as they are, and not to allow anything to um, to to change their way. And they should remain focused on what they want to do in their life, uh, especially as as uh, business uh, women. It takes a lot to to start and to run and to continue uh, a business, but um, but it's all about uh, your passion. If you're passionate about it, you will you will do it, and you will you will succeed to do it. And uh, getting back to the business women, as you work with many women, we can be successful practically in all spheres, in all I mean, like in all industries, even if it's traditionally so-called man-driven industries. Yes, we can. We can be successful in any business we choose. As I said, if you have the passion and if you remain committed to uh, your goals, then you will uh, continue doing it um, and you will, you will succeed in doing it. We have many examples of our women who started all these um, male dominant sector businesses uh, like restaurant, as I said, um, exporting dry foods, um, and construction, logistics, they, they all succeeded because they had a uh, passion, they remained committed to the goals that they had set, and they remained strong in, uh, in a male dominant sector, in a male dominant society as well. And they continued doing, uh, con continuing doing those uh, businesses and su successfully doing those businesses. So it's all about, uh, for, for us women, 
to also trust ourselves, um, to trust ourselves and uh, do not see women and men in terms of their ability di being different uh, because we are not. Yes, we are different because we were given different opportunities. Men were provided more opportunities. So they build their knowledge, they build their um, abilities and skills. We were not given that, those opportunities. But once we understand that this is all about opportunities, we can get those opportunities to build our knowledge, skills, and abilities to successfully run those um, non-traditional businesses for women, but traditional businesses for men. And what are your hopes for Afghanistan? My hopes? My hopes are many. My hopes and dreams about Afghanistan, your home my, country. Oh, my hopes and dreams for Afghanistan, is, there, there are many of them. Um, we, um, we hope that we have a prosperous, um, democratic Afghanistan where every, uh, every person in Afghanistan from any tribe, any um, um, religious uh, class uh, would be able to participate um, in anything they want to. They have the freedom of choice. They have the freedom of um, uh, speech. They have the freedom of um, everything that they want to do in that country. I want for girls to, um, to, to not think anymore in my country that they are less than boys and they cannot do certain things because just because they're girls. And I want um, Afghanistan to not, I mean, Afghan leaders, Afghan uh, political leaders uh, and religious leaders, not to connect every um, political situation with women and especially women's um, uh, covering and women's presence and women's um, uh, women, women's issues, um, because at this moment, all, all what's about uh, the political chaos is going on in the country, but all they're worried about is women to cover themselves. Mm, I mean, please first think about, you know, uh, solving the chaos, the political chaos in the country, and then uh, women, you know, women will be able to anyways be part of everything without um, the way you're um, um, uh, dictating to them to cover or, or for example, to only attend classes that are taught by women and they're only classes that are women only uh, classes uh, or women only work spheres. So a country where, um, yeah, that has freedom, democracy, everyone can participate in everything that they want, can choose their profession, and um, and can see that where the world has reached and can dream that they can also reach where the world has reached technologically and uh, from all aspects, economically and politically. Please support the people of Belarus. Say a couple of words in uh, supporting our people and our men and women, because, you know, they, as I said, like we've been fighting for more than a year, you know, and the situation is deteriorating in our country. And, you know, sometimes we feel like we are tired, you know, to continue our fight. Sometimes we feel, no, we need to get back to the fight, uh, to our fight. Just could you say a couple of words of support towards Belarus people? Because, as I said, like we are having difficult time right now, right now. I would love to, and I would be honored to say a couple of um, uh, support words of support. And my words of support to Belarus people would be uh, my prayers, uh, my best wishes um, for all of you to get out, out of the situation that you are in and uh, for all of you to, um, to become a, prosperous country once again and to have all your freedom and all your um, economic and political prosperities and men and women could participate in everything. And uh, for the international uh, partners, international community and in, including United Nations um, to, um, to please watch closely the situation and become part of it because today this world is not just uh, those specific countries, it's a global village and we are all connected with each other. So for the sake, sake of that um, connect, connectivity between all of us and um, all of us being part of each other and a part of a global village, 
let's become part of these countries, part of their the political processes of these countries like Belarus, Afghanistan, and everywhere else, and make them prosperous. And that will be for the benefit of everyone. Manisha, thank you so much for uh, for our conversation. I, as I told you in the beginning of our conversation, I admire everything what you do for the people of Afghanistan. I admire your work, uh, your passion towards Afghan women and the work you do, you have been doing for many, many years. So I wish you the same. I wish you to come back home as soon as possible when your country is free, democratic, and when you have no fears uh, and you just look forward to the future, which is much better which is thank you. You know, yeah. our presence thank you so much thank you Renaka. i wish you the same thank, thank you, you.